In this video, we are going to do a couple of proofs using contradiction. Contradiction is an indirect proof method where if we want to prove P is true, we start by assuming that it is not true. Then we are going to work to find a contradiction so that if not P, then Q is true, which of course would make Q false. But if not P, then Q is true, so we must conclude that not P was false and that is a proof by contradiction. That makes much more sense when we actually do one. So we're gonna to work together to prove that radical two is irrational by contradiction. And what that means is we start by assuming, suppose radical two is not irrational, or of course it makes more sense to say is rational. We're going to assume that not P is true and this is not P. So what do we know about rational numbers? Well, we can then say, then radical two, oops, let's start again. Then there exists two integers, A and B, such that radical two equals a over b. So where did that come from? Well, that is the definition of a rational number is that it can be written as a ratio of two integers. Um, I also must conclude that b cannot be zero because of course we cannot divide by zero. And, and this is, I'm just going to give to you, but this is something in chapter four we'll discuss and a and B have no common factors. So that is all of our assumption. Now in a proof by contradiction, we're going to start proving um, essentially what we're trying to prove, which is that radical two is rational. And we're going to keep going until we reach a contradiction that says, oh wait, that couldn't have been the case because it interferes or contradicts something that we assumed at the beginning of the question. So without further ado, we've got radical two equals a over b because I said so, because that is what a rational number is. Let's say I square each side. That gives me two equals a squared over b squared. So far, so good. Then I can say, well, that means 2b squared is equal to a squared, just by multiplying each side by b squared. Now, what does this tell me? This tells me that a squared must be even. Excuse me, that a must be even because we know if we square an odd number, we get an odd number. So this tells me that a must be even. So since a is even, I can say that a equals two C for some integer C. Thus, now I'm gonna do some more math. I can say 2b squared equals 2c squared and 2b squared equals 4c squared because I've squared it and therefore b squared is equal to 2c squared. Well now where does that get me? Well this tells me that b must be even because of this too, just like here, because of this too. Now, why is this a proof by contradiction? At the beginning of this, I said A and B have no common factors, but we know that if A is even and B is even, therefore they do have a common factor. So we have found a fact that contradicts one of our original assumptions. So we can say, whoops, lost my pen. 
since A and B have a common factor, this contradicts our original assumptions. And we're done. So here's another for us to try together and hopefully this one looks familiar to you. We've actually already proved this using contraposition and now we're going to try to prove it as well using contradiction. So to start, I'm going to say Suppose 3n plus 2 is even and n is odd. So again, I'm making the wrong assumption at the beginning. Since 3n plus 2 is even, then 3n is even. That makes sense. I've taken away two things, so if it started as even, it continues to be even. We know if we add or subtract an odd number from an even, what do we get? If you're not sure, do some of them in your head. So if I take a number like 2 and I subtract an odd number, then I get an odd number. So we know if we add or subtract an odd number from an even number, we get an odd number. So I'm going to take 3n, which I know is even, and I'm going to subtract n, which I know is odd, and that's going to give me 2n. And I'm saying this is odd. Well, why is it odd? Because I just said if I took an even number and I subtracted an odd number, I'm going to get an odd number. And hopefully you're seeing that this is a contradiction. So however, 2n cannot be odd because of course it's 2 times some number. So our original statement was false. And therefore, 3n plus 2 is even, sorry, therefore, if 3n plus 2 is even, then n is even. Whoa, <laughs> that is not one of the pictures. There you go. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If so, please like and share. If you're going to continue on with us, we are going to now talk about proof by cases.